Let's start here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of composing in pentatonic parallel part 28 trails. In today's episode, we reflected since last time we had listened to the raw composition with the shimmer undertone and we had rendered and watched the seven text cluster animation and it turned out very well. And we showed that to you. In fact, we can show that to you again real quick, briefly. Where is it? You're going to make me do this again, aren't you? Yep, we're going to start over. That's not where it is. It's in here. There it is. All right. <laughs> You're laughing at me. That's okay, because also this should, this would be neat to show what this looks like if it's being driven by shimmer. What does this look like? Yeah, perfect. And if we wanted to really drive it home, we would show this and take it off mute temporarily. Yeah, that'll teach you to laugh at me. I laugh at myself. So yeah, let's start here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of composing in Pentatonic Parallel Part 28 Trails. And what you are seeing right here is a rain cloud, a cloud with rain trails, being driven by our shimmer tone from the last episode. And of course, we don't listen to it. And uh, we've been experimenting quite a lot with trails today. These are the other trails that are being driven. But we've learned how to take this one and move it up and over and because we want a rain cloud up in this position. So this is a successful result. Where did this come from, you might well ask. Well, since our last time we listened to that shimmer tone and we watched the animation that we had rendered with it, which came out pretty well. And if you look at the bottom, the ground on the brown, the brown ground is shimmering and the clouds are shimmering. Yes. And we get another effect here. Clouds are shimmering, and they're shimmering at a different rate than the text is shimmering. So we reviewed that, and we felt pretty good about it. It worked. And so we said we what we really wanted to do now was to get, get good, get better at using the, the animation features. So we spent the bulk of today's stream experimenting with uh, and reading the manual, always a, a useful thing to do. The manuals is here. It's a good manual. It's a good tool. I actually, I actually re I'm recommending it these days. So we've already seen what happens when you when you drive trails. This is called a trail up here. But the other thing that we got slightly distracted doing was we learned how to work with text files a little bit better. So this is a this is like a two line text file that's pretty hard to edit if you use what's called a text module like this. This just says Spectrum. It's the title right there. However, we wanted a longer title that reminded us what we were doing here. So we learned that we could do that by having a text file on .txt. And if we did something like change here 
and save it, it was easy to just refresh and there it says change there. So, so that was useful to know because now we can, we can better annotate um, the work we're doing. And we said, well, why do you need to annotate the work we're doing? Because this is an annotation. Having shadow sonnet, the title at the bottom left, is an annotation of the imagery. And of course, the, the stanzas of the sonnet themselves are annotations. So we're kind of, we've learned a bit more about working with text files versus text modules. Then we got intrigued with things we had not used before called spectrum and waveform down here. So if we show you what this looks like, again, we're, this is what this is what it's showing. So the spectrum is the overtones of the contrabass. It has a, a fundamental low frequency, then multiples going up into here, and then it dies out. And that's the traditional crisscrossy waveform. There is another option in the program to display spectrum and waveform, and we looked at that. And we concluded that we liked this one on the left better. It was a lot easier to see and could be used to make pretty visual effects. And it allowed us to further master intricacies of moving text files around, like that one, and background polygons, like this. We're using four polygons to kind of show separate backgrounds, and we had to learn how to fit the display of the spectrum and the waveform to exactly overlap the windows that they're on top of. So we're kind of tickled that we feel that's aesthetic. And so slowly but surely, we made our way to um, <laughs> getting, getting to the rain cloud effect, which was we defined as trails going down and to the right. Now there's more to do here. Um, the other fun thing I think to point out here is that we can, when we look at these things, we can also uh, use our microphone and we did that. This is what our voice looks like in a spectrum waveform analysis. Do the same thing here. And again, uh, spectrum is important because that tells you the difference. Why does a contrabass sound different than an oboe? And we don't have that plugged in right now, but I could certainly show you if I sing a tone. It tells you right there. That's the fundamental frequency of my vocal cords. But I'm also getting multiples up here. I can't talk and show you at the same time. And then this is the horizontal. Uh, band. So this is how you study oboe versus flute versus uh, soprano versus alto versus bass versus coloratura soprano and so forth. You, you can actually look at those and see it. It's fascinating stuff. And we digress. And you can also drive the trails, which we're doing now. Uh, can drive the trails with the microphone like that. Ooh, except in, in that case, I have to put a multiplier on there because uh, ooh, ooh, maybe not that much. So you can see why it's valuable to learn to interact with these settings and parameters. And that's, we've been working our way through this inch by inch over the past several streams every time we made an animation. It's just that getting raining clouds had eaten our lunch. And today we feel like we've really made a major breakthrough. And the key point is that you need to what we call pre-translate or pre-position something uh, before you, before you um, add trails. And then after you add trails, then you can move it around. And that's, that's what happened. 
All of these things show the trails aim in different directions depending on where they are pre-translated. After you add trails, then what we did here, we took this one and we post-translated it to the upper left. I hope that made sense. Ideas for next time? Uh, boy, what are our ideas for next time? Well, obviously, continue working with rain, rain effects, uh, granularity, etc. Um, look at adding to the sonnet suite animation e.g. version 2. And then there's probably room, you know, TBD. We did listen some more. We did kind of like keeping the shimmer the way it is, but we're still, still listening, still exploring. So that concludes today's